Hey, it's Dr. Karen with this week's Hot Topic. Make sure you like this video, follow us on social media, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss another Hot Topic. So this week, I wanna to talk to you about frequency healing. Now, every human body cell has its own electric magnetic field, and if you've heard me talk about and explain acupuncture and some of the other frequency testing that I do, this is gonna make sense, but for those of you who haven't, this is gonna be new. Now, every human cell has and is responsive to frequent, uh, frequency and vibration. Now, aside from healing sound frequencies, frequencies can also affect the body through music. Now, music can evoke this more emotional response in the human body that can result in anything from goosebumps to this flood of emotion as tears or joy, sadness, anything like that. You're like, Whoop, that song just kind of hit me. So that's actually kind of a thing. Now, vibrational instruments such as singing bowls and gongs are used to more create this ripple-like effect of vibrations, um, and those are meant to kind of reset this consciousness. So some of the other instruments that might be used um, in sound frequency therapy are, like I said, freak, um, singing bowls, gongs, wind chimes are very common, pan flutes, uh, didgeridoos, rain sticks, and drums. So if you've heard any of those um, soundtracks that you're like, oh, that just kind of puts you in a trance, that's what it's trying to do. Now, some examples that can be used for um, this frequency healing are stroke recovery therapy, cancer treatments without surgery, autistic ser um, sensory therapy, brain waves entrainment, um, altering stress hormones. You can increase neurogenesis, so in unborn children um, or you know dementia patients. Enhancement of physical rehab programs and also decreased pain perception. So those are more of the common reasons um, of how they use those uh, frequency, those those frequency healings. So how is sound healing supposed to work, or this frequency healing? So the way that sound or frequency healing works depends on what type of frequency are being used and what vibration or rhythm. So it's not just you know a random sound or something. It's it's very specific. So more on that cellular level, sound healing works by triggering genetic changes, and that healing frequency can even damage cellular walls of cancerous growth in the case of high frequency sound. Um, so now this is different for low frequency sound, which I'll get to in just a minute. Now more on that therapeutic level, exposure to certain sound frequencies has also been shown to alter brain and body activities in ways um, that do help promote lower stress levels and give this higher self-healing um, immunological responses, which is what you want when you're trying to heal or get over some kind of stressor. Now, since lower vibrational frequencies are thought to cause more of the irrational disease or other negative effects on the human body, um, higher frequencies are generally the frequency that is used when we're talking about those um, frequency healing or anything that you want to do as far as healing purposes, you're going to want to use a high frequency uh, rather than the low frequency. Now, it's believed by some people, at least some um, individuals, they do operate at a higher frequency, and you can probably tell who these people are. Now, there are other people who operate more at a lower frequency based on, um, you know, unmitigated stress levels, unresolved feelings, anything, um, I don't know, just social interactions with others. So you typically can tell when somebody's either high frequency or they're a low frequency. So what this means is that one stressed out person can actually pass that lower frequency and negative attitude onto anyone else that they encounter. So I've mentioned this before in a couple other hot topics, so it's even the same with frequency. So some of the lists of the negative symptoms associated with low frequency sound exposure, it can be a loss of sleep, irritability, um, fatigue, loss of concentration, nausea, some of those type of things. So you might know if you're like, Whoa, I need to increase my frequency a little bit if you're starting to have some of these. Um, now, really the big picture is with all of what I just told you is can sound frequency or uh, can it really heal the body and give you anything? So basically, yes, the answer is yes. It has been used to heal the body in a lot of different ways. You can use it in a lot of different applications. Um, so for some of you that you're like, mm, this sounds a little weird, there's a ton of research out there. There's a ton of information. There's a lot of different therapies um, that you should definitely just look into and um, be open to some of these things because it definitely has... Um, you know, a really good healing power and a property and it gives some something else besides more of the traditional stuff. And you'll find that you feel a whole lot better once you've tried something different if you're trying things that don't necessarily work all the time and you just need to change your way. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I hope it opened your mind to some other things and explore some different options out there for you. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.